Hey folks, Dr. Rob Jones here, HeyDrRob.com. If you've been watching my previous videos, I've been pounding the message home, keep lordosis, try not to flex, because if we do, we can end up with all these various types of back problems. Specifically, we've been talking about the first of what we're gonna go over today, which is a range of back issues that we call flexion intolerance, okay? So, as I've said before, we're calling these segments Protect your back 101. It's the name of my book. It'll be out soon, so if you order it, all this information is going to be in there, but this is just a little bit more, kind of a quick and skinny version of it. Okay, so we've really talked quite a bit about flexion intolerance, and flexion intolerance is typically what happens when we bend too much, we round too much. Typically the pain is gonna be not as bad as what I'm gonna mention, you know, kind of in sequelae to what's happening with, with a disc process in the rest of this video, but typically that flexion intolerant pain is that pain when you sit, that pain when you bend to, to, to put your clothes on or to pick up your kids or if you've just been driving a long time. And basically what it is is just that midline pain that when you get out of that flex position and you come back up into lordosis, the pain generally goes away. So really what that is, again, we'll take the disc here. So basically we have the front, the back, okay? And we get this up to the camera. When you look at the disc process, right there, you can see that little bit of a fracture or a little crack in the ligament of the disc. That is really a bulge right through there. But really, when you don't quite have a bulge yet, we call this flexion intolerance because the amount of flexing we've been doing is really just causing enough irritation in the ligaments there that you're just getting some of that pain. Now, as we continue to move through flexion, we add load to it. Like my patients, they come in all the time with these injuries. I just had a gentleman who had a really bad disc because he had been building a rock wall and nobody really showed him how to bend properly. So the flexion with the load created a pretty big disc herniation. Okay, so again, let's go through the continuum here so we understand how this works. The first injury to the disc is what we're going to call, again, flexion intolerance. Okay, now as per previous videos and as I just mentioned, there's ways we can fix this. If we just change posture, do a couple quick exercises, change the way we're moving, this will typically get rid of the pain. But generally, flexion intolerance is just pain sitting, and bending. And that's really it, okay? Pretty easy to get rid of again. If you wanna learn how to get rid of it and you haven't seen my previous videos, go ahead and watch those and you'll, you'll learn how to get rid of this pretty quick. Now, if we take a flexion intolerant spine and we continue, as I said, to flex it, to load it, that flexion intolerant spine, so flexion intolerance, will turn into some sort of disc process, namely a disc bulge, okay? Now, this is gonna be the start of the next, of the severity from flexion intolerance to disc, where your pain is not just gonna go away when you stand up and change your posture. You're gonna to have to do some mitigating exercises to get rid of that. And we will actually get into that in, in the next video here, but I want you to understand the process first. So again, Looking at the spine model here, we've taken the spine out of flexion, or sorry, out of lordosis, we put it into flexion. There is just a little bit of irritation right there from a flexion intolerant disc. Now we flexed it more and more. Now we've got a little bulge right here. Now that bulge needs to be pushed back in, so we're gonna have to do that with some exercise. But typically that disc bulge, you're gonna get pain with sitting, very similar, to the flexion intolerant disc. You're gonna get pain with bending, okay? You're gonna get pain sometimes, if it's bad enough, with sneezing and coughing. You're gonna get pain with getting dressed in the morning, okay? We'll just say morning dressing. Driving in your car, 
Okay, again, these are all things that are going to really load that disc up. Another thing that my disc pain patients really complain of is transition pain. And transition pain is pain from sit to stand, stand to sit, rolling over in bed, getting out of bed in the morning, and that sort of thing. Now, again, that transition is because we're going from nice extended lordotic position to a flexed position as we stand up, sit down, rotating through the disc when we roll over in bed. Again, later videos, we're going to show you how to mitigate that. Now, Typically with a disc bulge, we're not going to see a lot of leg referral, okay? We're only going to see that localized pain in the back. Some of it may kind of refer kind of up into the top of the glute here, but there's not enough pressure yet on the nerve structures to really cause that sciatic referral pain, okay? Now again, if we want to really understand how the disc complex works, let's draw a disc in here, okay? So here's your disc. And I'm not a very good artist, so I'm going to do the best I can so you guys can understand this. This is top down, this is the front right here, this is the back here. The inside of the disc, remember me saying this is like a jelly donut, okay? Here's the jelly, all in through here, and this is called the nucleus pulposus, okay? This is the annulus fibrosus, which is a nice ligamentous ring that crisscrosses so you have nice structural rigidity all around the disc. Okay, now the spinal cord is gonna sit right here and then we have some nerves coming out this way. Now, depending on the direction of your flexing and coupled with some rotation, that is usually determined on which side the disc goes to. So, this is front, this is back, this is right, this is left. If I were to flex and rotate to my left side, I would create a squeeze over here on the disc and I would drive that disc down in this direction. So that's going to give us a right disc bulge. If I did one of those really brain dead exercises like I see a lot of people doing in the gym where they take a dumbbell and they basically just do this over and over and over again because you know we're trying to really carve up those obliques and I'm going to go this way and then that way. The more you bend over and over and over in one direction, you're actually going to squeeze that nuclear material in a left or right more, getting what we call a lateral disc, okay? So again, just for your illustration, if I wanted to really create a lateral disc on this side, I took a really heavy dumbbell and I would bend over and over and over. Every time I go down this way, I'm opening up this disc space I'm squeezing it here, I'm forcing that fluid out in that direction. So let's say hypothetically, I do have a lateral disc bulge, so I'm going to get a little break through the nuclear material here, and it's going to worm its way through the annulus fibrosus. Now, this is a very thick ligamentous lining, so it's typically not going to break right through. So a bulge is just going to push that outward just like that. So we have that, that red bulge coming out right there, and then we have that ligamentous lining over top holding it. So that's going to give us some lateral pain. And basically what you're going to see with this is all of these same symptoms. You're going to have pain sitting, bending, sneezing, dressing in the morning, sitting, but you're also going to have pain walking typically with a lateral disc. Now again, not always, there are exceptions, but if you have pain walking with the disc, typically disc sufferers tend to feel better when they get up and walk because it pulls that disc back in because of the lordosis. But if you get some pain walking, you might have this lateral disc, okay? If this disc is pushing in this direction on my back and I bend this way and I go, oh man, and I got a shot of pain over here, it's probably because I have a lateral disc bulge, okay? So again, more videos down the road, we're gonna show you how to correct that. So there's our lateral disc. If we've been doing some flexion with only a little bit of rotation, like I have patients all the time that, that sit at their desks and they'll reach in one direction on their desk to get paper from the printer or grab a phone. And again, sitting and flexing and rotating is gonna force the fluid here to come back out that way and it's gonna give us a right disc bulge. Okay, so let's draw that in. So this nuclear material is starting to worm its way through that nice ligamentous ring. And now we've got a disc bulge right here. We have a right disc bulge, okay? So again, we have the annulus fibrosis holding onto that disc bulge. Now again, 
pain with these movements here, okay? We're not really gonna get a lot of sciatic pain from this because it's not touching any of the nerve structures. Now, as we continue to get worse and worse and worse, and we're moving, we're maybe getting bad advice from our fitness instructor, or we're maybe getting some advice from a practitioner telling us to pull our knees to our chest or stretch more, or we're trying to rotate back and forth because the back is really tight. We know those are back breakers and we don't want to do these, okay? But if we are doing that and we're picking up some heavy load or if we're squatting too much weight or deadlifting too much weight and we're not keeping in lordosis, this will start to migrate further, okay? Now, we will go into a different type of disc bulge. So basically, what will happen is that disc bulge will potentially herniate, okay? Now, if that disc bulge herniates, that means it's literally that the annulus fibrosis, that ring has opened up and that nuclear material, the nucleus pulposus has started to herniate through that ligament. Now, if that happens, I'll draw it in here, what's gonna happen is it's gonna work its way down. Sometimes it's gonna push on the spinal cord here and it's gonna cause a lot of pain, okay? Or it will come out and herniate down here and push on that nerve root, okay? And that'll cause a lot of pain there. Now, with both of these cases, if it pushes on the cord or on the nerve root, you're actually gonna start getting sciatic pain running down your leg. So, you're gonna have pain sitting, bending, sneezing and coughing, morning dressing, driving in a car, and you're gonna have transition pain. But it's gonna not be just located in the back, now it's gonna shoot down your leg and you're gonna get sciatica, which is kind of a wastebasket term for pain down the leg, but really that pressure on the nerve and how much it presses on the nerve is gonna be really the factor of how far down your leg it's gonna go, okay? So the more pressure on the nerve, the further down your leg that's gonna go. Now, we have different types of herniations. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with all of this, but if you hear words like protrusion, okay? That's a term for the disc moving beyond its normal borders, okay? You have the term extrusion, okay? An extruded disc is a disc that goes beyond its normal borders, and then, let me use the spine model here, an extruded disc is basically gonna bulge to such a degree that it's gonna go past the height. Let's see if I can get this to do this. That's what an extruded disc would look like. It's gonna go past its normal height, Let's see right there, of the regular disc, okay? Now, when you have a protrusion or extrusion, you're really gonna be in a lot of pain. Sometimes it's so bad that even if you tip your chin down, you'll get lower back pain, and that's because you're putting tension on the spinal cord, okay? Now, again, symptoms with all these, but now we're getting sciatic symptom and pain down the leg with these two. Now, sometimes you can get an extrusion, which will ex have an extruded fragment, okay? Now, what that is, is you have an extruded fragment, a little piece of that disc has now broken off and it's migrated, it's gone down the spinal cord, it's maybe gone into one of the holes of the intervertebral frame here. Now you're in a ton of pain and typically, I hate to say it, sometimes those are, those are necess necessitating surgery because they have to go in there and clip that piece off, okay? So let's definitely follow Dr. Rob's principles here, the Protect Your Back 101 principles, and let's not do enough flexing and rotating with loads so we don't get a fragment, okay? Now, we can also have what's called a prolapse or a sequestration, okay? And both of those are no bueno, okay? Those are really bad. The disc is opened up, you've had so much load and so much flexion, that disc has opened up and it started to actually migrate even further than that fragment, and these are typically surgery, okay? So we're really gonna be looking in the realm of flexion intolerance, disc bulging, and herniations with protrusion extrusion of what we're hoping we're gonna be able to fix here. And, and I'm really pretty positive I can help you with these. Now, the most common sites we're gonna see these are at L4-5, and L5, S1, okay. L4, 5 is the most common and is basically this disc right here, okay. Now, what's gonna happen is if that L4, 5 disc bulges back and it pushes on that nerve, it's gonna follow the dermatome, which is the nerve and what it supplies down your leg. So the referral pattern on this is gonna be more 
lateral thigh or outside of your thigh, across the outside of your knee, into your shin, and into the top of your foot. Now, if you have that aching, deep pain when you sit and you feel like it's just a toothache and it's a shin splint and you want to rub your shin and it goes away, maybe it gets a little better when you walk or when you move, that's probably an L4-5 disc. Now, if you have that pain, you know, it's, it's, it's really important you do something about it because if it gets worse, what can happen is, or if the disc gets worse, you can actually develop weakness in the mechanisms of the shin muscles, what's called the tibialis anterior, which extend your foot or dorsiflex your ankle up this way. I've seen cases before where people waited too long to get care, and now they have something called a drop foot, where they physically lack the mechanism of that shin muscle to dorsiflex the ankle up here. If that happens, you get a drop foot, you have to wear a brace on your foot, and that's just not gonna come back. So if you're ever in that situation, you have that kind of what we call motor weakness, it's a medical emergency. You need to go see your healthcare practitioner about that. Okay, so another symptom, again, of that L4-5 is that side pain, but you can also get some numbness and tinkling, and that's just, again, from that pressure on the nerve. Now, an L5-S1 is the next most common. That's gonna be the lowest disc right here. Again, if it pushes on the nerve root there, that's gonna go more buttock, hamstring, calf, and bottom of your foot. That's gonna give you lack of ability to go up on your toes, potentially not be able to plantar flex, same mechanism, mechanism we talked about. That's motor weakness if you have that, that's a medical emergency. Now, if you have those referral patterns, we should be able to help you out with these videos. Okay, so all in all, if we think about the logic of how this works, the progression, we've flexed too much, we know we're gonna get flexion intolerance because we're just getting a little bit of irritation around the disc here because the nuclear material is pushing out against the annulus, but it's not quite bulging yet, okay? Straighten up, we feel better, okay? We go even further, add some load, like doing weighted sit-ups, Russian twists, heavy squats or deadlifts, where we're getting out of position, and I'm not saying not to do squats and deadlifts, I do them myself, but if you do them properly, you're not gonna hurt yourself. A lot of times, unfortunately, they're not done properly. You go too much into that flexion, we get a disc bulge. Again, pain sitting, bending, sneezing, coughing, morning dressing, I can always tell, even before I do a history, if a patient has a disc bulge or disc herniation. They come in and they're obvious pain, but I also, if I look down at their feet, I can see that they're not wearing socks. And it's because they have so much pain in the morning because discs tend to be a little bit more plump first thing in the morning. It is so painful for them to bend over. They can barely get their pants and underwear on and by the time they get to their socks, they go to hell with it and they just slip their shoes on and go out the door, okay? So another cardinal symptom of that. The sneezing and coughing is what we call valsalva pressure. When you sneeze or cough, you build up this intra-abdominal or intra-thoracic pressure that is in your lungs and that builds intrathecal pressure. The fecal sac is where the spinal cord runs and that pressure builds up and bulges out. And if you have a bulge pretty close to that central canal here, you're gonna get a shot of pain when you cough or sneeze. So again, we're looking at these symptoms, and if you have them, again, you are gonna be in one of these categories, okay? Disc bulge, typically gonna give you pain, but it's not gonna refer. Now, if we get into a herniation where we have protrusion extrusion, those are gonna get really more into sciatic referral, depending on its L4 or 5, where it's gonna go, we talked about earlier. Again, we have videos we can help you correct this, but again, if you please, please, please are listening to anything I'm saying, don't go through the bad exercise. Don't go through the bad stretches. Watch my previous videos and you will not get into this. You won't run into these problems. Trust me, I've had a couple of bad discs before. They are not fun to deal with. But once you know how to manage them, these things will go away and you can live a normal, healthy life. So that's it. That's the progression of flexion intolerance to disc bulging to herniating. Explanation of our sciatica there. Again, I hope you understand this. If you have any questions or comments, shoot me a comment and, and I'll see if I can answer your question. If you have any pain, I'll help you with it. Or I'll try my best anyways. Um, check me out on socials at Hey Dr. Rob. If you like this, give me a like. Uh, if you want to subscribe, please do so because I'd love to get this message out. And again, follow me for some other videos on how to correct this and most importantly, how to make sure it doesn't happen to you. So until next time, don't forget to protect your back.